Oh, she is my dear, my darling one, her eyes so sparkling, full of fun. No other, no other can match the likes of her. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. There is a reason I am wearing green. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and I'm here to review Darby O'Gill in The Little People. So Darby O'Gill in The Little People is directed by Robert Stevenson, who also directed movies such as Mary Poppins, Old Yeller, and Herbie Rides Again. The film is produced by Walt Disney, and the film does star Albert Sharp, Janet Monroe, Sean Connery, and Jimmy Odea. So before I review Darby O'Gill and the Little People, I'm actually bringing in a guest star as part of my St. Patrick's Day collab. And this video is actually because of her suggesting that we actually review this film together, and I thought it was a great idea. I am introducing Rachel Wagner so before I give my thoughts, I'm giving the spotlight to her. So Rachel, take it away. Hi everybody, happy St. Patrick's Day. And I'm really excited to be on Tony's channel. And we thought as big Disney fans that it would be fun to uh, celebrate St. Patrick's Day and do a little collab where we talked about one of our favorite Disney films. And it is, a, it is a St. Patrick's Day Look of the Irish film called Darby O'Gill and the Little People. And this is a very, very, very charming uh, Disney live action film. And it features a young Sean Connery who is very, very, very attractive and handsome and charming in the role. He plays this man who is hired by this property owner to come in to this small Irish town and he is going to become the new sort of property manager, gardener, whatever, uh, for a older man named Darby who has been taking care of the, the land all this time. And Darby has a daughter named Katie and, uh, and Darby likes to tell stories at the town pub about the leprechaun king and his people and how they uh, his interactions with them and everybody thinks he's just kind of the crazy old man uh, but could there be more truth to what he says <laughs> and you just start a little adventure with uh, Darby Michael and Katie uh, interacting with the uh, little people with the Inter interacting with the leprechauns and uh, it is a lot a lot of fun and uh, you get a little bit of fantasy in here you get some really fun Irish type music uh, and uh, including a great uh, fiddle uh, piece <laughs> that the fiddle music goes incredibly fast and is very very well, well done. Also have a nice romance here between Sean Connery and Janet Munro. She's probably most famous for being in this film and then also in the Swiss Family Robinson. So if you've seen that for Disney and uh, she has sort of a, a wholesome quality. There's a lot of things in this movie that remind me of The Quiet Man and I think that is maybe like the more sort of grown up version of this similar story. Of course The Quiet Man doesn't have the leprechauns and other things but just the way that the town is all sort of uh, reacts to Darby is is very similar and I think Katie is very similar to the uh, Maureen O'Hara role in uh, The Quiet Man and I think that Sean Connery is somewhat similar to John Wayne in his role and so they're, they're, they're kind of similar and uh, there's a lot of humor in here on King played by Jimmy O'Day when he tricks Darby uh, they have a lot of fun with that and also him telling uh, the stories. Darby is played by Albert Sharp and he just so fits the character. He so fits this type. And you could argue that this is definitely like a cliche of a lot of sort of Irish or, or other kind of stereotypes and cliches, but I think it's very lovingly done. It's very sweetly done. And so it, it doesn't bother me at all. I, I find it entertaining and, and uh, it's one that I think uh, all, a wide range of kids will enjoy. I think older kids will like it because like I said it has that romance and and uh, there's a great scene at the end I think that has a lot of heart he uh, is about to go on the coachman to, to heaven and uh, and he his daughter uh, is is going to be saved and uh, because he's made the sacrifice for for her and so it's a real real beautiful moment you know with what ends up happening there and and also kind of fun and, and funny and so uh, it's it looks it looks nice the cinematography I think holds up 
uh, quite well. And uh, yeah, so it's got good music, it's got good characters, it's got uh, romance, it's got fantasy. Uh, so it's a great choice for you and your family here on St. Patrick's Day. So yeah, thanks so much for getting to be a part of this collab with Tony. And uh, please subscribe to my channel. I think you really like it. I particularly focus on an on animation. I review all the animated films uh, for the year, and I have reviewed the entire Disney canon. And I do weekly family movie nights. Uh, every Sunday, I post a family movie night review. So I think you'll really enjoy if you subscribe to my channel. So thanks so much, and uh, I'll talk to you later. Happy St. Patrick's Day! Thank you so much, Rachel, for reviewing Darby O'Gill and the Little People. Darby O'Gill and the Little People is a wonderful film to watch for a holiday like St. Patrick's Day. Also, it's just a wonderful Disney movie to watch. It's just a wonderful movie. I think just for families in general, especially if you're into like the classic movies, this is definitely the film for you to see because man, does this film just bring so much joy. There's a lot of humor in this film. There's even a few musical numbers. There's a little bit of Irish music music that even goes along the way. I mean, it just screams St. Patrick's Day right there. Now, I mentioned musical numbers. I wouldn't really say this is a musical because there's really only like maybe what, two, three musical numbers in total for this. So it's not a musical, but you know, for the few musical numbers that were added in this film, they were great. I love the musical numbers. I thought they were catchy. I thought it just fit the spirit of what this film was going for. I also love the sequence with Darby O'Gill. It's when he meets King Brian, who is like the king of the leprechauns, and you see all these other leprechauns, and he's like playing this violin. That was a very fun, weird, but very fun sequence. I actually think that it does have a very good balance because not only does it have a nice blend of your weird moments when it deals with the leprechauns, but there's a lot of heart that actually does go into this film. Everyone honestly gives really terrific performances here. Albert Sharp as the title character Darby O'Gill, he is fantastic in this film. He plays this very eccentric character who you could tell has a lot of good worth ethic to him. And you know, he was the laborer until Lord Fitzpatrick retired him. And he lives with his daughter, uh, Katie O'Gill, who is played by Janet Monroe and I have to say that she actually did a very good job with her role and I just really like the daughter in general. I thought the daughter was actually a very interesting character and yes ladies and gentlemen before he was James Bond you actually do see Sean Connery here in this film. He plays the character of Michael McBride who is basically like the replacement for Darby O'Gill and when you meet his character you know you could already sense there's some kind of likability to him and then when you get more and more into the film, yeah, his character is very likable, to be honest. It wasn't the cliche like, oh, this person replaces someone else who's being a jerk about it. No, he's just actually a very genuine guy, which is something I really appreciate about Darby O'Gill. And I was just very invested in the storyline dealing with the leprechaun because when the movie begins, it starts out with Darby O'Gill telling the stories of the leprechaun. And of course, there's this cliche where everyone looks at him as if he's this crazy man, but then he falls into this well. And that's when he meets all these leprechauns. And from there, he meets the leader of the leprechauns, King Brian. And I have to say, Jimmy O'Dea, fantastic as uh, King Brian. I think he actually brings the most laughs, but there's also a lot of heart that goes into his character. And that's something that I just really like. You know, you have these characters that are energetic, but they could also just have a lot of heart to them, which is something I appreciated. And I actually did really like the story that King Brian grants Darby O'Gill, like these wishes, but these are wishes that Darby O'Gill has to be careful with. I actually really loved how the movie handled that. That was actually very clever of the film to do. And then there's also this romance story between Katie O'Gill and Michael McBride. You do buy that these two are very affectionate for one another and where the film takes their story, particularly in the second half, was really interesting because they really don't show up that much in the first half. The first half is Darby O'Gill looking for the leprechauns and actually seeing them with their own very eyes. He hangs out with King Brian and the other leprechauns 
leprechauns for a little bit. And then once he's done meeting the rest of the leprechauns and it just becomes King Brian being the only leprechaun being focused from there, that's when the movie starts to focus more on Katie O'Gill and Michael McBride. And although this is a very lighthearted movie, for the most part this is a very lighthearted film, I will say it does take quite a dark turn in the third act, which I thought was actually um, yeah, that was kind of, that was pretty interesting. Now, yes, I could see how maybe the shift in tone could be distracting. Personally, I didn't really find it distracting. Like, when the film actually gets dark for a little bit in the third act, I was like, wow, I was actually not expecting this. That was actually a very clever thing of the film to take when we go in this third act. So the film does take itself seriously, but it was never to the point where you're really down you know you're still fully invested even if the film does take this little dark turn and then eventually in the third act it does go back to its more lighter tone this is a very well directed film by robert stevenson like i said he's directed movies like mary poppins old yeller and herbie rides again i thought he did a fantastic job directing this film i really felt like i was in a, another world watching a film like this i never felt like i was in the real world for a second and i think that's thanks to him just directing this film the writing is by lawrence edward watkin and i thought he did a very good job of writing the film the dialogue is very witty it's very sharp everything comes together as far as the script goes and the cinematography for darby o'gill it looks just absolutely beautiful like it's gorgeous cinematography the color schemes the lighting everything just honestly comes together so naturally the filmmaking in Darby O'Gill is just incredible and as far as the other performances honestly everyone does a very good job like the actor that plays the town bully i thought he did a very good job the actress that plays this elderly woman i thought she did a very good job all the other performances besides um albert sharp sean connery janet monroe and jimmy odea besides those guys but all the other supporting characters they honestly do a great job now maybe as far as problems do go with um darby o'gill i'll probably say that maybe yes you could you could predict here and there where the storyline is going like the minute you see michael mcbride and janet monroe's characters having affections like the minute they see each other yeah you could predict that was gonna happen and then when it comes to the conflict in the third act you can actually predict where they're able to resolve this certain conflict and that's where they take that dark turn for a little bit but then once this conflict gets resolved, it kind of came off as rushed. Like, I'm all like, okay, for a good chunk of 10 to 15 minutes, it gets a little dark. And then how this conflict gets resolved, you're all like, hmm, that, that just, it just came out of nowhere. Overall, you guys, Darby O'Gill and The Little People is an outstanding film. I love this movie, to be honest. It brings me so much joy. It's a perfect movie to watch on a holiday like St. Patrick's Day. Like definitely if you want to get into the St. Patrick's Day mood and you somehow have never seen this film, I personally do recommend it because man it just brings a huge smile on my face and even when it does get dark for a little bit in the third act it still never really took me out of the moment i thought the writing was very clever it has a very creative storyline i really love where the storyline was going i love the performances i love the cinematography direction by robert stevenson is incredible the filmmaking in general in this film is just really really impressive the few musical numbers that are in this film are a lot of fun this is definitely a very fun film but it's also a very creative film it's also a funny film and even handles the dramatic aspects very well like when the movie needs to get serious it handles those moments very well so i'm gonna give darby o'gill and the little people three and a half out of four stars
So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what you think about Darby O'Gill and the Little People. What's your favorite movie to watch on St. Patrick's Day? And I would also love to thank Rachel Wagner for coming here to review Darby O'Gill and the Little People, as well as giving the suggestion for this collab review. Thank you so much, Rachel. If you guys want to check out Rachel's channel, I will leave a link in the description down below. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, you guys. Happy St. Patrick's Day, and don't forget forget that I will always have Tiger Power!